Okay, so now you're you're buying the land, 3,100 acres. You bring your three uh, peers to come start with you. You have the advantage that you have money, which means you can get started with money. And uh, now people are kind of realizing your family's got money. Okay, maybe we're going to do something with this guy. You start 31 ha- uh, 3,100 acres. You got your stuff going. Who's your fr- first customer, and how do you find your first customer? Uh, at that point, it was a West Coast SEAL team, actually, that sent their guys all the way across because they didn't have any access to good areas then. And that's how we started. Our first big regular customer was actually the Canadian Special Forces. The, the Canadian equivalent of Delta Force would come and do their selection January, February, March, because it was just too damn cold to be training in Toronto. Got it. And how did they find you? Because it's not like you're doing internet, you're running funnels, you're doing ads, you're running it on a paper. The, the soft units would talk. The soft units would talk even to people in Canada? Sure. Yeah. So tell me more. Unpack that for me. Just like that, because the, the U.S. elite units would train with Canadians, would train with the Brits, would train with the other European counterparts. And uh, what are they saying? Are they saying, hey, did you guys hear about what he's doing? Did you guys hear about what Eric started? Is that kind of what the conversation is like? And what is he doing? Sure. He's doing such and such. Let me give him a call. Yep. And then, so if you've never done this Look, before. So, so uh, the di- why, why we built Blackwater the way it was is because training on government bases was exceedingly bureaucratic. You'd go to try to check out and use a range and some sergeant wouldn't be around and they wouldn't give you the range brief and your ammo wouldn't show up on time. And for a SEAL team that's doing 11 out of 12 months where you're on the road and you have all this stuff you have to train for, all these hoops you have to jump through, then having to go through the nonsense of getting jerked around on an mm-hmm. army base, mm-hmm. it just didn't work. So we gave people a country club-like experience. If you book a tea time, I'm not a golfer, but if you book a tea time, you expect to be ready at 8 a.m. Right. You expect the greens are going to be raked, and it's all going to be in order. And that's what we did. Radio, brief, ammo, go. Lunch at 12, and it was a customer service organization, and that's that's how we ran it. And... Um, <clears throat> At the same time, so Blackwater's getting started, I moved back to Michigan because the original business my dad started, the diecast machine business, because we'd sold the mothership, mm-hmm. but the, the diecast machine business was, had been kind of bumping along since started. It, it was not really making money or losing money. And um, I, wanted, I didn't have an MBA, but I really wanted to turn around my dad's business and make something run well. And... Um, I remember my dad described the president there as the smartest engineer he ever knew. And great, great guy, smart guy, would not change anything because we're trying to kind of do a lean transformation, kind of based on the Toyota production system to engineer out cost and um, buy things smarter. So I had at 27, I had to fire him. And uh, that was quite an experience and kind of restaffed the whole place with people that were much more focused on. Six Sigma and lean manufacturing, et cetera. And that, um, that really taught me about linear flow. If you think about old school factories versus how a Toyota system, a Toyota production system sure. runs. Yep. And that really, I mean, even the Japanese, when they came to compete in America in mm-hmm. the 80s, mm-hmm. it really, it, it, it forced American manufacturing to wake up yeah. and cut the waste. Detroit, yeah. Exactly. And so... Seeing that and doing that to a machine tool business, which was a 30-year-old business and very based on very old school practices, I start to think that, okay, we built a training facility, but what does the military do? It recruits, it vets, vet meaning vetting, recruits, vets, equips, trains, deploys, and supports people to do a difficult job in a difficult place. And so really, as Blackwater built out, and there was actually a kind of a aspirational picture made at the day we opened of what we wanted to look like in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. It it was became a machine, which did that. And so later when 9-11 happened and we got pulled into the security business, doing overseas deployments of people for the USG, that put us in good shape. And that allowed us to be the low cost competitor because we could process and recruit and do all that stuff with and for the guys before they went, much much more effectively than our than our competitors. So you start off with training, all one. So that's ninety six, December twenty six, ninety six. We so opened in ninety seven. Okay. Yep. So that means you don't get uh, the real big contracts till oh one oh two. 
Correct. The first year years were very lean. Um, the what's your revenue first year? What kind of numbers you guys? Four hundred thousand. Okay, got it. Second year was eight hundred, then a million two, then a million six. Still haven't blown up yet. Nope. Then it went to twelve. Got it. That's it. That's oh, got it. Twelve thirty five. Yep. One sixty. Mm-hmm. Four hundred. Five fifty, and up. Did you guys ever hit a, a bill in revenue? Uh, no? We were about eight fifty. Eight fifty. Eight fifty. We topped out at. And this is seven. Would it be oh seven or oh eight? Uh, about oh eight. Oh eight. Okay. So a legitimate business. You're going 400, 800, 1. 2, 1. 6, 16 million, right? Or twelve to six. Twelve million. million Thirty five million. Yep. Okay. So so if your four hundred first year revenue, you brought the three guys. The average salary for Navy SEAL today at the median is, I think, uh, 97. The top one percentile, if I'm not mistaken, is 135, 138 today. Yeah, look, the, the first year or two, I still had to, I had to help with payroll. Got sure. it. But, so then, but then, again, you just find people that will find a way to win. And we had very destructive customers, meaning they shot a lot of stuff. Right. And... They ended up destroying all the target systems we bought on the outside. And so Jim Dehart, the guy that came over from Dev Group, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. designed fantastic steel targets that everybody loved. And mm-hmm. so customers started buying them. And, and oddly enough, the FBI ordered in the 11th hour of the last day of the fiscal year, <laughs> ordered $400,000 worth of target, target systems from us. That was the that was four hundred thousand of that million two revenue year. <laughs> Third on the last day. No, literally like at eleven fifty five p.m. Wow. on September thirty, the last day of the fiscal year, a fax machine that's starts spitting out. You. Oh God, yeah, thirty percent of our. I know that's great. <laughs> of course, I know what that feels like. And the irony it was, it was the FBI. So our target systems, uh, sta- uh, you know, um, are are probably at 10 or 12 field field offices around the country. Now, you, you're, I'm assuming you're losing money first year, second year, third year, because you're not... We're you're break, paying, we're, we broke even at about a million two. Okay, so you're paying these guys. You're not, make, you're not taking any money off the table because you don't have any money to take off the table. Negative. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.